Hey folks, in this episode we visit Manatee Sanctuary Park and the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. Come join us in sunny Florida. Make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss our next adventure. If you've never been there before, you should know that Florida is big. I often forget that when crossing the state line. It was a long trip from home to the central Florida coast. As we drove south, though, the skies got clearer, and even though it was dark when we arrived at Port Canaveral, the next morning was beautiful. Good morning. We're at the Manatee Sanctuary City Park here on Cape Canaveral. And boy, there's a lot of interesting animals down here in Florida that you don't see up home. We've already seen some turtles and some ibises and we're gonna hopefully go see some gators. Oh, there's a cruise ship. There really is something to the weather in Florida. Look how beautiful this place is. There also seem to be a lot of county and city parks here. Where's your three? Well, five. Oh, there's another. Six, Did, six now? Where's the, where's the three? There's another on the other oh. side. This is called Banana River Park, and it's about a five minute walk from the Manatee Sanctuary Park. It's all still on Cape Canaveral. Signs to stay away from water, alligators, and snakes. Water snakes. going to water here, huh? Water snakes, poisonous water snakes. Oh no. Stay back there if you want to live. I think these are blueberries? I don't know. They look like blueberries. I mean, this is Banana River Park. The bananas don't grow like that. After Banana River Park, we headed to the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. We were really on Merritt Island the whole time. It's a big island, lots of typical beach amenities, but it is also the home of America's East Coast space activities. I'm not going to take a picture because you can't see it. Oh, yes, you can see it, Ted. National wildlife refuges are part of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. A lot of them are set up strategically to aid migrating birds. I'm sure it's very convenient that NASA can restrict access to this giant swath of land when they feel it's necessary. It was $10 to do the Black Point Wildlife Drive. You can either pay at the entrance gate or visit recreation.gov for a refuge pass. Part of the wildlife drive included some parking areas and restrooms where you could stop and take some short hikes. There are 51 salt marsh impoundments in this refuge where conditions can be adjusted. Water level adaptations and wildland management, including prescribed fire, 
are used to create environments helpful to migrating seabirds. There were a few of these decks with basically built-in bird blinds on them. Plenty of room to sneak your giant zoom lens through. This place is great for nature photography. Oh, that's the adult. We'll be all right. We're not going to go five miles, right? There was a nice visitor center here. Lots of displays about animals, migration, and how humans interact with the environment. Pretty much like a national park visitor center, except this one was run by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Oh, pelts. River otter. Okay, raise your hand if you've ever seen the big brown signs on the highway that say National Wildlife Refuge and you just drove right past it. That's what we usually do, but we're finding out they are pretty cool places. 
I'm in the butterfly garden here at the visitor center for the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. We just took a little drive on the Black Point Wildlife Drive and saw basically what's like a natural zoo. And over here, there is an enormous alligator. Let's go see if we can find it. They even have passport stamps, if you're into that. You see that? Yeah. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. The only problem being here at the end of December is that we are almost to sunset, and it's only four o'clock. I know you don't have that much time to explore more of these cool areas. Look at this beautiful lake here. It's probably a lagoon or something. Well, we've had two different kinds of boardwalks on this trip. The first one, of course, was at Congaree National Park. We were down in the bottomlands there along the Congaree River. And now we are on Merritt Island, and this boardwalk is right next to the visitor center for the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. Mm -hmm. It's a gator. gator. You see another gator out there? No. Oh, yes. Right about there? Yep. We'll have to show you one of Graham's pictures. The Great Florida Birding Trail. What? This is one of the gateway sites on the Great Florida Birding and Wildlife Trail. Cool. Our final stop for the day was Canaveral National Seashore, but since it was nearly dark and we didn't bring beach things, we didn't stay too long. There's the Vehicle Assembly Building. The Vehicle Assembly Building is the largest single-story building in the world and what is used to assemble pre-manufactured space vehicle components. In the old days, it would have held the space shuttle assemblies and the Saturn V rockets. Oh, and I hear the ocean. I don't know what that is. If you know what this thing is, tell us in the comments. <laughs> Thanks for watching. In our next video, we travel to Blue Springs State Park and go hunting for manatees. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, like and share this video, and comment below.